Hey guys, welcome to the guide. In this episode, we're talking about the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt from World War II fame. Uh, it was designed and created by Alexander Cat Cartavelli. Alexander Cartavelli? Yeah, that's, that's my best pronunciation right there. And it's the grandfather of the A-10 Thunderbolt II. So, I know nobody calls the A-10 the Thunderbolt II. They call it the Warthog. But this is the plane that it gets the name Thunderbolt 2 from. So it's the grandfather of the A-10 Thunderbolts, Warthog. Uh, and a total of 15,683 pr produced throughout the war, making it the highest number of fighters built by the U.S. during World War II, according to the book. So, yeah, that's what it is. Um, the P-47D, which it was the most produced during the war. It had a wingspan of 41 feet and a length of 36 feet. It was pretty big for a fighter. It was a very large fighter. And it was powered by a 2,000 horsepower Pratt & Whitney R2800 double wasp 18 cylinder radial air cooled engine. <sighs> That's a mouthful. Pretty much the idea behind this plane was get the biggest engine you can and slap it on an airframe. That was the idea behind the P-47 Thunderbolt. And it shares the double wasp engine with the Marines Corsair and the Navy's Hellcat. So that engine just got thrown everywhere. It was like originally designed as a bomber engine, but then fighter designers got their hands on it and they're like, this is an awesome engine. We're just gonna use this for fighting aircraft, all right? And it had a top speed of 427 miles per hour at 30,000 feet. It could go up to 42,000 feet. That's as high as it could go. It had a range of 474 miles without drop tanks, which was kind of its major disadvantage because when it first went into service with the Army Air Corps, they wanted to make it a bomber escort, but it just didn't have the range to be a bomber escort. So that was kind of the downfall of it. And it was armed with 850 caliber machine guns. I mean, that's American logic right there, right? Like, if 650 caliber machine guns is awesome, which most American planes were armed with, then, like, 850 caliber machine guns is going to be amazing. Like, that that's American logic at its finest right there. And it could carry a total of 2,500 pounds worth of bombs or rockets or a mixture of the two. So, as I said before, they tried to make it a bomber escort, but it really just wasn't cut out for that job. But, like, what it excelled at was the ground attack role. Because it could carry a very large bomb load for a fighter. That, that's what it excelled at, was the ground attack roll. And it had freaking 850 caliber machine guns strapped to it, okay? Like, come on now. Whatever you point 850 caliber machine guns at is pretty much going to disintegrate, right? Okay, so its first flight as a prototype was on May 6, 1941, when the United States government was just scrambling to get a fighter project going because the P-40 Warhawk wasn't working out and the P-39 Air Cobra wasn't working out. And they found out that the P-38 couldn't really dogfight. So, like, the U.S. government was scrambling to get a dogfighter in the skies at the beginning of World War II. And they were hoping, they were pitting their bets that the P-47 would turn out to be a good dogfighter. Which, it turned out to be a decent dogfighter, but it, it wasn't like the P-51 Mustang. Like, it, it's, not it's not insanely maneuverable. But, it has freaking 850 caliber machine guns on it, and it was rugged as all get out. Like, the P-47 Thunderbolt could take some hits and just keep chugging along. That, that's really what it got famous for, was it, its ability to take a pounding, and then the pilot being able to walk away from it. But, as far as like it being the most maneuverable thing in the skies, it, it wasn't. It was maneuverable enough, but it wasn't anything to brag about. Um, anyways, it entered service at the beginning of 1943 with the 8th Air Force when they were trying to make it uh, an escort fighter, which it didn't turn out to be so good at. And it excelled at the ground attack roll because for a fighter, 2,500 pounds worth of bombs or rockets, 
that's a pretty big bomb load and you that's a lot of firepower just like strapped to your wings right there so that's ended up being what the P-47 was good at was the ground attack role it, it turned out to be an awesome ground attack fighter th that's nothing to be ashamed of I mean hey that's got to get done pretty much it could go in drop its bombs and then it could fight its way out if it had to so it, it was a good fighter it just wasn't the best fighter and it had freaking 850 caliber machine guns I mean come on now come on that kind of makes up for it right freaking 850 caliber machine guns anyways uh, it served mostly in the European theater it did serve some in the Pacific towards the later stages of the war but most of the good like highly prized aircraft and technology went to the European theater until that got under control and then they then we started worrying more about the Pacific theater and it was supplied to the Soviet Union Great Britain Brazil Mexico like Brazil and Mexico I don't know where that came from but okay and the free French the free French got some too so it pretty much got handed out to everybody that we considered to be an ally during World War two um, it was produced from 1942 to 1945 and yeah it's it's the P-47 Thunderbolt man it, it's like it's an awesome plane I'm sorry this plane is cool so yep that's the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt of World War II heritage in a nutshell alright thanks for watching